Today we are talking about block charge. That includes legal guarding position with uh, how we establish, um, but it also is going to go over just some of the little, like little bumps or slide overs, or we're going to talk about um, airborne shooter as much as we are non airborne shooters. Uh, most block charges, I think, happen uh, with the a non shooter player who's on the floor. So we're going to go over all that stuff, but um, let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> Everyone saw that one, right? Let's play it fast again and then we'll play it slow. Two feet, torso facing, legal guarding position. We all agree, yes? But, but Josh, his feet are like not next to each other. He's kind of stepping back. So that doesn't count, right? Does it matter where the feet are touching the floor? Not unless the offensive player is going that direction, going into those feet. Right. right. So the rule does not say your feet must be shoulder width apart within your frame. On the, no, it doesn't say that. It says you have to have two feet touching the playing court. And he has two feet touching the playing court. He's currently moving because he's trying to, you know, not lose ground on his opponent. And that's why they allow for that because – they're not going to make someone who's trying to set up for a charge stand stationary and still. They're going to allow them to move with their opponent. So two feet touching the playing court, his torso must be facing his opponent, which he, it is here. So this is definitely legal guarding position. And then the offensive player does what? Doesn't stop. He just goes right through. That's an easy one. Do we agree? Yes. All right. Everybody's got to agree on it. That's, that's why I played it first. That's an easy one. Should be. All right. This one's from a couple of years ago. A block was called. The girls that are taping obviously didn't like it. <laughs> but uh, let's play it fast again and then tell me what you think. <laughs> Whistle came kidding? from the center. Now that was a blind call. That was a blind call, I think she said. I don't know what that means. Uh, what do you guys think? Block, charge, unsure? It was difficult to tell from our angle, I thought. I mean, I had charge on it, and I think the right guy called it, even if he got the wrong call. So, Okay, so this is coming down center side, right? But it's also coming toward lead. So lead can come get this as well. Do we agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, comes down. Does he have a legal guarding position? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, see, that's where I'm, I'm kind of like, he, he kind of hopped back and then he started to fall. He started to bail. And that, okay, but what does he, what does he have a problem with that bail? Okay, what does he have right now? He has two feet on the ground. And before the contact, you, you're going to see him bounce right, back. So, do we agree that at this particular moment in the video, in the clip, he has a legal guarding position. Yes, we do. Okay, so now that he has established a legal guarding position, because all you have to do to establish is two feet and facing your opponent. After you establish, what can you do? You can go backward. You can go obliquely. You can go laterally. Right. You can move all directions, basically, except toward the, the opponent, right? Right. So when he does this little hop backwards – which I agree with, he moved backward and he kind of hopped, but he's still maintaining his position that he's already established. And since he's already established it, he doesn't even have to be 
on the ground when he gets hit. He could be in the air. And if he gets hit, that's still a player on the offensive player. So if he, if the offensive player adjusts his direction because he sees that the player in front of him has legal guarding position, he adjusts his direction to the left, and the defensive player adjusts his direction to the left, um, there's no concern there that that. No concern. That's because I'm allowed to move laterally. Okay, so I've established my legal guarding position. It says you can move laterally, obliquely. You can move uh, backward. And they do that because if the offensive tries to adjust their path, like you said, I should be allowed to move along with them as they're adjusting. If they adjust, I should be allowed to adjust. And I shouldn't have to then all of a sudden have two feet on the, on the floor facing you every time you adjust because an adjustment could be slight, right? Little adjustment, little adjustment, little adjustment. So they're saying it, it's a fluid game. Everyone's moving. We should all be able to move together. Does that make sense? It makes sense, Josh, and I don't think it happened in this particular play. Um, but if if the offensive player made an exaggerated leap to the let's just say to the left, and while he was airborne, now the defender goes underneath an airborne shooter. That, that would be a different scenario, wouldn't it? All right. So there's there's a, a little bit of a loophole, so to speak, or some gray area in how it's worded because the rule book does say you do not need one or one or I don't remember exactly how it says, but one or both feet do not need to be touching after you've established. I think what they're referring to is verticality. You're allowed to jump in the air, right? And then he contacts you, but you can't really jump to the side. So if you're in the air and you're jumping in the path of a, of a defender who's moving, that's got to be a block. Now, you could say by rule, you're supported, and I guess you're right, but the spirit and intent of the rule is that you're moving along, and they're saying, okay, you don't need to have two feet on the floor because, you know, you're, you take one step, you take another step, you might get contacted at any point in your movement, but if you're jumping, it's almost like you're just giving up and you're kind of throwing your body in the way, so I'm going to call that a block, yes. And so, to this point, if the offensive player leaves the ground during that attempt to move over, is that a block? I mean, he's already airborne. There's no... no. If he's already airborne, that's a yeah. difference, right? Yeah. So right now, and we're going to have a couple of videos of that. So let's wait. Let's table that okay. till we get to those videos. A player who's simply moving along, an offensive player who's dribbling, feet on the floor, we're allowed to move with them laterally, obliquely, backward. Okay? Rules, yeah. The rules do change slightly when there's an airborne shooter. Yeah, and I was just using this particular play, extrapolating on it, but it doesn't appear that in this play he's going underneath an airborne shooter after he's left the air. I mean, it looked like he maintained legal port guarding position. No. At no point did he move toward his opponent. No. If there's some lateral movement, I don't see any, but if there's some, there's no way we're going to see it from this angle. The lead would be able to see it. I don't think the center would really be able to see it either, but so we're just going to go that he moved straight back. That's a charge. Good discussion. Let's do the next one. All right. Now this one I used. This one I used for uh, a different purpose other than the block charge, but I want to play it anyway because the block charge is what I want to look at. We got a block. Center calls a block. I'm going to play it fast again. What do you guys think? Block or charge or don't know? Charge, charge. And I think the lead was ready to blow it too. It does look <laughs> like the lead was ready to punch it down. And good for the lead to know and recognize that there's another whistle. And a whistle came from the primary official. So who, the, the official who should make the call made the call. But he blew his whistle as well. He was going to punch and he said, oh, nope, not going to do it. So that's good. But let's see here. He's got two feet and he's facing his opponent. So that means... He has legal guarding position, correct? 
Correct. And then what happens? What does he do? He turns, he his, turns, shoulder. He turns to his shoulder. Okay, he turns, his, he turns his shoulder, and when he gets hit, he gets hit kind of on the side. So does that make it a block? No. No. He's allowed yeah. to protect himself. Protecting himself. He is allowed to turn or to duck, and then I added some extra stuff here. Allowed to turn or duck to absorb eminent contact, which is what he does. I'm pretty sure he's, you know, he's probably not afraid he's going to get killed, but he's like, oh, I'm not going to take this straight on, and he doesn't have to. In fact... If he were to turn completely around and face the basket and then get barreled into, that's still a charge. He does not need to be facing his opponent any longer. I don't see that very often, if at all. No. I've ever seen it. But I can turn. I can even say, oh, he's going up. I'm going to turn to get ready for the rebound and then get barreled into from behind. I'm still in a legal guarding position, even though I'm not facing my opponent at that point. So my, my initial thought about the play, Josh, was that it must have been about the primary defender. But when you slowed it down, it seemed like it was pretty incidental. Um, so what's, what's your thoughts on why that call was made the way that it was made? Primary defender got beat. Do we agree? Yes. Did the primary defender cause any contact affecting the play? Possibly. Possibly. So. No. And if that's what the block call is made, maybe the block is on 24, thinking he got pushed, you know, not necessarily pushed, but blocks from behind. Okay, I could see that. I I'm passing on that because the, the kid, look how fast he's going toward the play. Right? So any little contact that may have been caused, if any at all, didn't cause him change direction didn't didn't affect his rhythm or balance or speed unless you think he hipped him you know maybe he hipped him and and kind of knocked his legs from under him but that's not what i see here yes no yeah the the only thing that i really saw was it seemed like he got him on the top of the shoulder or something i thought maybe that's why that call was made the way it was but it seems to me that that would have been marginal enough and it didn't affect the shot or the trajectory of the player. So that's, that's why I was asking. And I wouldn't see that as being a block. I mean, it could be a hit or a push, but not a block. Yeah. If you're going to call that, I think you're going to be better off calling a push from behind and they could say, but he didn't push him. Well, he hit him with his hips coach. He pushed him with his hips or, or his body instead of calling a block. It just helps distinguish because there's two different points of contact, it distinguishes the difference. If that's a call, I'm passing on that probably every time. Now, again, it's different on the floor. It's different with the angle you have. But um, I think everyone in the gym thought if, and I don't know what the, the ending file was, everyone in the gym thought this is what the call is, right? Because that's what everyone in the gym sees. All right, so we always have to, we do have to evaluate or at least acknowledge that something else may have happened uh, in order to get to that, that point. All right, so we can turn and absorb the contact from the side or from the back after we establish a legal guarding position. All right, here is an airborne shooter situation. Okay, official calls a block. What do you guys think? Yeah, I'm going to play. I'm going to. No, he actually called a charge. Sorry, official called a charge. I'm going to play it fast and then um, slow again, and then we'll, we'll draw it out, at least from what I see. Block, charge, nothing. Block. Yeah. Block. Right. Everyone says block. Well, let's see. He's an airborne shooter, yes? Yes. All right. There's the defender's frame. So he is blocking the path through his frame, correct? Not yet. And then what does he do? Slides over into a completely new path, which is the path of the shooter at that point. 
and then causes contact. So because he was an airborne shooter, now we can no longer move into the path. Yes, we're allowed to move laterally, but that's only for a, a ball handler who is on the floor. Everyone understands that, right? So as soon as he leaves the floor, what can that player no longer do now that he's airborne? What can the ball handler do? Or what I should say, what can't he do? He can't change his own direction. Have you ever tried changing your direction in the air? It's impossible, right? I mean, unless you're falling from a plane and use your air. Um, right. I was looking at it. I, I saw it differently. I, I saw that the ball handler had an angle um, that was still clear and the defender hadn't arrived to cut off that angle. He was still moving into that angle. So you can see the ball handler basically has an open lane. It's still clear and the defender is moving into that. And so right there, he, he goes into that, 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 uh, that line. And that's when, that's why I call it the charge. He never established legal guardian position in front of, he wasn't facing, his torso was not facing the defender based on his, his attempt to uh so that should be a so that should be a block block it's absolutely a block it's absolutely a block agreed when the shooter goes airborne or when the player goes airborne it makes our job incredibly difficult now because it's not an easy you hit me right dead center when you could hit dead center 90 plus percent of the time it's going to be a charge if i get hit here it's on you that means i got there before you Right. But when the airborne, when the shooter goes airborne and then you get hit right here, that all bets are off because I may have got there after you went airborne. So we have to now know multiple points on the floor to figure out what happened. All right. Josh, real quick. Um, what's your, what's your, your, your phrasing uh, for that, for any irate coach, what do you typically go to? Is it just the explaining the rule or do you, have other things that you say to kind of get that coach back on. As far as calling a block on that play? Yeah, block a block or charge on those bang bang plays. What do you typically say to I, I would say, them? I would say like on this play, if I had a block, I would say, coach, he slid on, he slid under him after he went up. That's all I'd have to say. He went in the air and then he slid into him. Okay. If it's a charge, I'll say, coach, he got there first. Absolutely. If they want more explanation, you can give a little bit more of it. For the most part, a block charge doesn't need explanation because they're either going to agree with you or not. And you're not going to convince them at that moment that you're right and they're wrong. They're not, they're not asking you for, for information. They're asking you, they're basically making a statement or asking a question to tell you they don't agree with your call, right? You could go in, you can read them the rule book and you could give them all the information and the facts they're, they still don't care. They they think that you got it wrong and they're telling you and that's really what they're doing. So in a block charge, if you are going to give an explanation, make it super short and go. Or just ignore him and go. If he's all upset, just go. Because again, you're not going to do any good by, by staying there. Now, maybe later when he's calm and he asks you calmly, you can say a few words. But um, I learned that early on. Someone told me, Josh, why did you go over there and and tell him, I'm like, well, he asked me what the, they said. he doesn't care. He just wants to yell at you. So just go and let things calm down. All right. Can we make the case, Josh, for you could say, you know, that's a bang, bang play coach. And I'm going to look at that after the game, just to make sure one way or the other. If you, if you don't know, if you're not sure you got it right, then you could say that and say, you know what, maybe you are sure. And you just want to calm them down. Maybe you're right, coach. I'll take a look at it. Can you send me the video? That usually, no, they don't always like it, but they, oh, yeah, okay, I can do that. Because it shows that you actually want to get it right. If they say you got it wrong, okay, I'll look at it again. But that's not going to change the call at that time. And so that's why I don't spend a, a ton of time on the explanation. All right. Static charge call. I'm going to play it fast again. Happened here. What do you think? 
Is he legally guarding him right here? Is this a legal guarding position? Yes. All right. He has a legal guarding position and basically stands right there and waits. Now, he brought his left foot forward, right? He brought his left foot toward the opponent. Let's see if I can get it slow. So does that movement toward the opponent? Would you say yes or no? It wasn't so much toward the opponent as it was bringing it within his frame. Yeah. That's, that's right. So, yeah. Okay, good. So just because he moves toward his opponent, that doesn't mean he moved toward and into his opponent. He is moving his left foot to come in alignment with where his frame already is. So don't be fooled by leg movement. Know where his frame is and where contact happens. I agree with the official on this. This is a charge. Now, can I make a quick comment? Now, this is, this is, I'm not kidding, five, six, maybe seven years ago. What, look at the signal of the official. Everybody knew what he wanted, right? Everybody knew what he had. Everybody believed him because it was emphatic, but, but in today's world, there's no, there's no punch anymore, right? And I know he's pointing, but there's no punch. So put the hand behind the head. I still punch with the other hand, but put the hand behind the head for a player control foul. Okay, we got a whistle and it looks like a, a block from the opposite side of the floor. Center calls it. Definitely a collision and a lost ball. Yep, he calls a block. I think it's a bonus. What do you guys think? Does he have a legal does he have a legal guarding position here? Yes. No. How is he not legal? Torso is not facing the offender, the offensive what, player. What's it facing? Facing what? his shoulder. Okay, his torso is facing his opponent. It doesn't say you have to be facing the front of your opponent because that would give a huge advantage to the ball handler. Then I'll just dribble with my shoulder to everybody. So every time there's contact, it's on you, right? That would be smart for the, the dribbler, but that's not what the rule says. The rule says that your the defender's torso must be facing his opponent which he is right yes okay now and i understand your point but we have to make sure that we understand it doesn't matter how the ball handler is is standing it matters how the defender is standing so this is a legal guarding position for sure moments before right i mean he just got there let's see he just got there. He's moving forward, but now he's stopped right here. Right? And remember, it's not moving toward your opponent right before contact. It's moving your opponent, moving toward your opponent at the point of contact. So let's, let, let's play this out. He's not airborne. All right. We've established lead guarding position. There's his frame. But look at the look. Josh, can I ask you something? Yeah, go ahead. Look what 21 does. When look at 21, he throws, he jumps into the defender with his left shoulder high. Watch this. Watch right now. Go for it slow. Boom. There it is, right there in the face, in the chin. Yeah, that might be um, what do they call that in football? Targeting. <laughs> <laughs> so don't you think that should have been whistled right there? Look at that. Holy smack that kid. Okay, so. This play, hold on, let me stop this. This play for sure needs a whistle, for sure. Definitely. But we can't penalize that defender. Now, again, he was moving forward, moving, and then he stopped right before contact. But he wasn't moving toward the opponent when the contact happened. As you watch the play, and I'll play it again, the offensive player made all the contact. In fact, he surged his shoulder to make sure that that contact was made. That foul needs to be called on the offensive player. It could almost he, be escalated to an intentional. You could call an intentional. I think you're going to get a lot of grief if you do. But if, if he does come up and he hits him up like that, 
absolutely, you could call an intentional and say, coach, because like I said, and I'm not kidding, in football, anything upward and toward the head is targeting and you're, and, and you're tossed. So be know what happened. I don't see on this video exactly what the contact was. It looks like to me like he gets him right in here. But it's definitely not on the defender. Do we agree? Agreed. Now, I want to look at this again because – now, my question that I want to talk about is the trail who's right there has no whistle. And, and if he determines that there's no whistle, that's fine. But I don't think that this is a call that the center should be coming all the way across the floor to get. First of all, the center official really shouldn't be watching this play at all. He doesn't have a lot of competitive matchups, but this isn't even close to his area. And the though they're not competitive, he's got a lot of players in his area. He's got a lot of players, right? And those players could do something, especially with the ball coming down. So he needs to be watching those players. And and the trail is literally right on top of it. So if the trail misses it, then it's on him. And I know that doesn't necessarily help you when a coach yells at you because you're standing right in front of the coach. But you can say, coach, he was right there. Coach, he had the best look. Coach, I'm not sure, but he was there. You know, I mean – you don't have to get into a long drawn out conversation, but I'm not going to, as far as we know, the, the defender maybe bumped him with his backhand that the center can't see. And so then the trail let him bump him with his shoulder. You know, sometimes we give a little tit for tat. I'm not saying it's right, but sometimes if one thing happens and the other guy reacts and it's, they're all marginal enough, we kind of let it play out. Let the official who's close there take it. That wasn't a barrel through. Now the ball got knocked loose. I got that. And a lot kind of happened because of it, but I'm letting the trail. That's all the trail for me. Anyone agree or disagree with that? Well, I, I can say from personal experience that the trail would have had something on that if the center hadn't been an eager center of a gun coming across so quick. So uh, that was that was my play, and I was on top of it, and I would have had a player control, but I'm like, okay, well, he's got it, so he's he's got it it's on him. So, so – let your partner get the call. If a second and a half later happens and you want to come. Okay. I, for me still, I would rather say to the coach, I guess we missed it. And I'm never going to say my partner missed it. Yeah. Yeah. He missed it. I'll say we missed it. If I saw it happen and my partner had no whistle and I waited too long to come in, we missed it. That's okay. You can admit that. You don't want to say that four times a game, obviously. But you can tell the coach, at least he then va is validated that something happened. You didn't call it. Okay, we can all move on. Well, it goes to the adage, if you're going to come out of your area and get a call, you better get it right. And he didn't. Right. And uh, I, I've said this before. Uh, Mark Davis, I think it was, in the NBA said that they were tracking the times that the officials blew their whistle outside of their primary, and they were wrong like 80 plus or 90 plus percent of the time. They were wrong. You think you see it right. You think you see it all the way. You think you got it because you're saving the crew and you actually got it wrong. So. Hey, okay, got a block call. Sit down, kid. Come on. I can't see. We got a block call and he counts the bucket. What do you guys think? I'm going to zoom in. Here it comes slow. That's a charge. Do you guys think charge? It looks like charge. he establishes. Charge. Before, I got charge. I got another angle to look at this. Let's look at it slow again real quick, and then we'll switch the angle. Did he get there in time? Yes. Yeah. Definitely an airborne shooter, so he has to get there before the shooter goes airborne. He's there. All the feet are touching the floor. He's there. He's there. So he's got a legal guarding position. So now. And we don't have an at, RA in high school. As he backtracks a little bit, there's no arc on the floor. 
he backtracks a little bit. Now I, I agree. If there was a if there was an arc there, and we don't know where the arc would be, where you would have to guess, it does look like he would might have been standing in it. Then yeah, okay, that would have been a block simply because of the arc. But we don't have that in high school, not yet at least. All you have to do is get there first. No matter where you're standing, you could be standing on the the end line. Well, not on the end line, but you could be standing right near the end line and get barreled into it, and it's still a charge. So. Again, it doesn't make it's not easy. We got to make those split decisions. But um, that was definitely a charge. Yes. Player control file. Yep. Yes. All right. You guys are getting really good. I can't do this as a topic anymore. You guys are too good. How about. Oh, this is a good one. No whistle on the play. No whistle. Here it is fast again, and then we'll let it play out. Charge. Block, charge, nothing. These officials had nothing. We agree this is a legal guarding position? Yes. Yep. After showing you the... Graphics here, so then what happens? He just barrels into him, right? Whose call should this be? Well, I just showed you whose primary it's in. Whose primary is this in? Leads. Leads. So the leads should be watching this, right? Now, by rule, where's the ball right now? Trail. In the trail, and if there is a drive to the basket that starts in your primary, that official is supposed to stay with the drive all the way to the basket. So, in essence, we should be having two officials watch this play. Do we agree with that? Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. And it looks like we do. They're, they both have eyes on it. Okay. So then contact happens. Leads watching it. Center's over here. The center probably has a good look at it, too. He's watching the, the players in front of him and, and, and beyond those players, but he's watching all the way through into the lane, right? It's a perfect, perfect chance for three whistles. This is a, a possible three whistles. I agree. Now, he's got a few players in the way, so maybe he can't quite see. All right, let's give him a pass because maybe he's blocked out. Doesn't know exactly what happened. Trail, as I said, is following the play all the way in. So I know I put secondary here, but I guess by rule, that's still his primary, his primary call because he's following the drive into the basket. So I don't know who said three whistles, but we could have a potential for three whistles on this play. But yet we had, said, we had no Mark whistles. Said three. We had no whistles. We need, not good. we need a whistle. Could, right? an could an argument be made that I'm letting the play finish the defending team keep got the rebound. We're going the other way. Let's roll. I know we got bodies on the floor. I, I understand that, but could there have been something in the mind that just said, Hey, we got, we, we changed hands. We're going. No. no. Hey, that's Hey, Josh, I want to make a comment. Uh, that, that was me on trail. That was me on that play. That was me on trail. And I thought, I'm like, okay, here comes a, here comes a block. Maybe I should have called it from trail. And I'm like, oh, the lead's going to get it. He doesn't get it. And I didn't call it. And I should have. The kid ran back down to court to me. because that. And he said, what do I got to do? I said, nothing. We blew the call. That, what do that, I, that's, that's I got to do? Yeah, he said, what do I got to do to get the call? I said, nothing. You, We blew the call. That was a charge. So... Well, I, I, back to uh, Ken's question. I say the reason we can't have nothing, and yes, the, the changed hands and went the other way, but the offensive player made such great contact, which caused the players, I know you said, you mentioned that, but they both fell to the ground on a high impact play that everybody in the gym knows like something happened. That guy has to have a whistle. 
And if you call a block and get it wrong, I'd rather you call a block and get it wrong than have no whistle at all. Because what you're doing by not having a whistle is saying, we're going to allow that contact tonight. Right. Right. right? And then it's going to get worse and worse and worse. And maybe the next one's going to have a forearm, you know, and the next one's up in the face. And so we want to calm that down and say that's. And then we have a fight. Uh, yeah, and it leads to a yeah exactly. You let too physical of play happen, and that that um, escalates. Yep, fair. That's a missed call. That's a charge. I agree, but do you not agree, Tim? If a, someone came in and called it a block, it's better than nothing. Uh, yeah, better better nothing. But I know you but, don't like wrong calls, but no, you know. <laughs> no. But yeah, I'd rather have something than than that guy laying on the floor. And neither none of us make a call. So. All right, how about this one? Six, six, it is Skeet. Dish it off. Swagger back to Skeet. Marcus said, why don't I lope toward the hoop and fall down but draw a foul? Okay, you got a whistle on the play. I'm going to play it again fast real quick. Six, six, it is I'm assuming a block because he didn't punch, and we all know you punch when you get excited for a charge call. What do you guys think? Foul, block, charge, nothing. Block. Do we agree he has a legal guarding position at this point? Yes. Yes. Until the offensive player gets by him. Does he get by him? He's moving laterally with him. Is he not? Does he have head and shoulders past his past his opponent? Not yet. No. no. There he does. Really? Does he? Because there where's he. The, where's the basket? The basket is still in between him and his opponent. No call. He doesn't have head and shoulders past him. The defender stayed with him the entire way. I agree that there's some contact. I'm passing on this. I think the contact is caused by the offensive player. And then the, the offensive player falls down because the contact looks pretty minimal. Falls on trying to get a foul, which he gets. Agree? Disagree? I heard a few out there saying you're calling nothing. Nothing. Six, six, it is. Skeet, dish it off. Swagger back. In my opinion, he's a smart player because he's like, I'm going to fall and try and get something. I don't like flopping, but I understand why he does it. And I don't know if it's necessarily a, a flop, but incidental contact for me. And I know the rule doesn't say Head and shoulders past your opponent between your opponent and the basket. I know it doesn't say that. But they're implying the path of the dribbler. And so where is that or ball handler? Where is that path of that ball handler going? He's going toward the basket. That's where he wants to go. So he wants to get around his defender to get to the basket. And he went around and he went, oh, I went too far. I got to come back. Well, if the defender's with them the whole way, that defender's legal. Maybe the coin flip was the thing that's going to determine the winner. 54-52, oh! Holman, blocking foul, no bucket. Blocking. All right, the official is adamant on his call. He is selling his call. Maybe it's an overtime game, 52-54. to 54. Tough game. Got to sell your call. I'm going to play it like this. Determine the winner. 54-52, oh! Holman, blocking oh, foul, no bucket. What do you guys blocking. think? Block, charge, or nothing? Charge. I see a, charge. I see a shoulder into the torso. Yeah. Charge. He definitely has a legal guarding position, right? Mm hmm. Oh, yes. yeah. Less. Less O'Connor's funny. He's adamantly wrong. Yeah. Uh, oh, <laughs> I agree. All right. Now he starts to move laterally to maintain his position, right? He's allowed to move laterally. And the offensive lowers his shoulder to ensure that he makes contact and knocks the player over. That is a charge. Maybe the coin flip was the thing that's going to determine the winner. 54-52, oh! Holman, blocking foul. Do you think the defender no put a little uh, theater into his falling? Or no? Looks like he threw his head back a little bit, but he did get hit pretty hard. So I think he, he may have exaggerated. 
he's trying to land softly i think <laughs> i think he put some theater into it but it doesn't take away from the fact that it was a charge it wasn't a the the the, the ball handler stopped to try to avoid the contact after he went in he went in and he just went after him and so that that's a charge that's just how your your uh, coaches teach you to play defense that's a charge all day my opinion <laughs> it almost looked like he was gonna change it to a charge if you look back he, he sold the block but then he like almost put his hand behind his head for a charge Let's maybe see. the coin flip was the thing that's going to determine the winner. Already went, sold to it. 54, 52, oh! hold in, blocking foul, no bucket. <laughs> I don't know if that's what he was doing. I think maybe he was getting ready to signal no good or – because he, he nailed his hips several times to call that block before he did anything. Block. Oh my God. Block. And it stopped. Oh, I'm sorry. Good case for slowing down the call here. Well, in his mind, he. I'm not going to fault the guy for getting a call wrong on the angle that we see, but in his mind, he puts it there, but I don't know what, I don't know what he's doing. He's putting his hand back there. That's a, that's a good Glenn. I don't know what that is. He had in his mind the whole, that's a block. It's a block. And he knew in an overtime game, two-point difference, he's going to have to sell that call because that's there's a lot of contact there. So he's selling it and he's selling it. So I'm going to give him credit for that. I think he got it wrong. I think it was a charge. But he sold what he had to make sure everybody in the gym, you know, didn't like, are you, you're terrible. No, he, he sold it and he got it. And that's what we're going with. So, all right, let's see how many more I can get here. Okay, got a block call on this one. Block. Was it a block or a charge? Here's a, here it is fast again, and then I'll play it slow. Got to respect the, uh, the aggression here by Tom Burke, not backing off, putting on some pressure, starting back in the game. What do you guys think, block or charge? Charge. You got legal guarding position. That's a charge. Just moments before, right? Literally half a second before contact happens, but that's okay, right? As long as I establish right before contact, I'm legal. It looked like his torso might have been leaning outside his frame, though. Maybe, but that's hard to see from the angle that we had. Would you agree? Yes. That's the only bad thing about these is when you when I watch some of these state games that they show the different angles, then you see the guy's lateral movement or slight this way. A lot of times the camera angle that we have doesn't show that. So that's why I try not to you know, harp on officials, like, how could he call that? Because we don't know exactly what he saw. Block, charge, or nothing? Yeah, You take a pass on that. Nothing. All Nothing. Right, by rule, what do you have? By rule. I've got a charge. charge. If you got anything, you got anything, you got a charge. But by rule, that's a charge because he hit him in the shoulder, right? Cause contact. But this really is this really is a no call. I think these officials passed on this because there's contact, but the dribbler is trying to go around. And the defender is falling down easily to try and sell his his call. I think that's nothing. No. You would be supported by rule if you called a charge, but that's I think that's a nothing. So are we going to get a flop call in high school anytime soon? Well, that's a good question. Um, I kind of wish we would, but I don't know. I. I I don't see that happening. They're focusing more on the arc and more on the shot clock. And what was the other thing they want to, I think they may fix the free throw situation. Like they do in the, I think they do it in women's college where every quarter, you, if you get like 
I don't know what the number is, but say five fouls, it's bonus. And then the second quarter, you start over. And if you get to five fouls, it's bonus. And then the third quarter, you start. I like that idea. I like that idea. Ken, I didn't hear you. It's not bonus. It's two shots. All right. Well, bonus is the two, two shots. Right, it's now. double bonus. It goes straight to double bonus. Straight to two shots. So um, I, I, I like that. I think everything should be one and one. <laughs> All right. Um, let me play one more. And then maybe I can find a, an ending one. Is this the same game? No, it's a different game. Same colors. The official calls a charge. No call. Did you see oh, it? Wrong, I'm going to play it again. All right, watch. The big guy comes in. Now, he might have thrown his arm in there. We can't see how much of an arm he threw. Do we agree? Yeah. So he might have thrown an arm in, but let's just look at his body. Like, did his body continue to move forward, or did he kind of stop to dribble the other way? Right? He spun away, so it looks like he stopped his action. Now, I think by rule, again, the contact, there was definitely contact. How much, we don't know. By rule, that's a player control foul. But 10 sold it so hard. It leads me to believe that was nothing. And by reading well, that, by reading the body that, movement of the ball handler, it looks like the he kind of went there, saw the defender there, stopped. Yes, there was some contact, but he stopped. And instead of going through his defender, he went the other way, which is what he's supposed to do. Yeah, so but you, after you referenced ten. the rule of extending the arm, but he didn't really extend, did he? Well, we can't see that because the, the angle is is straight through both players. There's no way I can see if he if he pushed him off. Because if he pushes, even if it's just a little of an extension, if he pushes, he was a big, he's a big kid. He's a strong kid. He could probably knock him over. And that's Agreed. probably what happened, if I had to guess. But from what we could see, it looks like he just went boom and then went the other way. Mark, you had a, a comment? Yeah, well, as the defensive player is falling – if you had to look at the angle in slow motion, he may have hit him slightly in his chest. And that guy's a big guy. He, he got knocked down that easily. Well, mm -hmm. players flop all the time, right? But just because they flop doesn't mean that there wasn't a foul. A lot of times we will rule incidental contact uh, because we didn't think the contact rose to the level of a foul but it doesn't mean the contact didn't happen. Sometimes the kid flops, but we figure, well, you know what? You still got hit enough. I'm going to call the foul, but it almost feels like you want to call a foul and then rebuke the kid for flopping. Uh, that's these, these big kids are taught to bring their shoulder up into the de defender to clear the space. So if there's enough contact, we've got to get control of that. Agreed. Agreed. We have to be able to rule on contact that affects the game. All right. So can a, can a case be made? Go ahead. Uh, can a case be made for something like that? I mean, my initial reaction was this guy was flopping, right? And so I'd probably have a fist and a block because this guy is being so exaggerative and that cools that kind of garbage off. So well, what do you think? All right. Of well, I'm torn on calling a block on a kid for flopping because that's not the rule and he's not really blocking him right he didn't block him he just flopped i'm not saying it doesn't work in some situations but i tend to shy away from that because if you make a habit of that then you're penalizing a kid yeah you're penalizing a kid for flopping but we don't have a flopping rule then technically that's a technical foul right if he's faking being fouled now if you've got a huge bang, bang, and the kid starts to fall back and then he falls down and the other kid trips over him because he was falling and he didn't fall because he had contact. If there's other contact that then causes after he fell, you can call a block because any contact that impedes would be a block. So you're not really making it up, but you're still making a point as, a, as opposed to passing on incidental contact. You're going to say, no, I'm going to call a block on that, min that minor contact that just happened. 
that I would normally pass on, I'm going to call a block. But to call a block on a player who just didn't do anything other than flop, I don't know. Does anybody agree or disagree? Like you say, it depends on the situation. Yeah, every situation is different. It, it does, you know. I just say don't make a habit of calling a block on a kid that flops because you don't like the flopping because that's not the rule and you're going to get yourself into trouble at one point or another. I think. But at some point, I, I've I've said to the kid when and not called anything and said to the kid, "Don't do that anymore." Yeah, you know, I think that's they, good. They, they know what you're talking about. Yeah, you give a talk to, hey, Kate, yeah, stop it, and they say yeah. what? I'm like, you know what I'm talking about. Talking about right. Or you could even say like, you flopped on the last play. I don't want you to keep doing it. Or I, I'm going to have to take care of it myself. Which is a technical, not a common foul. Which is a technical foul. Which we don't common like to call. Common foul is a good option to not have to go to the tech, right? So that's that's why I was going there in the first place. And I think I maybe did two or three of those all last year. So Yeah, but when the coach says, what did he do? What are you going to tell him? He flopped. <laughs> Well, you, that's not a that's not a Which block. Is, you called a block. That's a you, I know. you flopped, right? I don't say so, that. I'm kidding. I'm just saying it could get you into trouble, trouble. if you have to ultimately de, um, defend your action. I don't know. And most coaches do get it. If you call it and you say it, most coaches will get it. But it takes one coach to get you in trouble. All right. These two teams will meet again at Pine Richland. Mason Montac over to Morton. Push by Wentz, nothing called. Morton drives in the lane, short, puts it back up, short, and a foul call. I've showed this play before because there is so much stuff that happens in this play. Let me play it fast again real quick, and then you guys tell me what you think. These two teams will meet again at Pine Richland. Mason Montag over to Morton. There's a push. Push by Wentz, nothing called. Morton. Drives in the lane, short, puts it back up, short, and a foul call. What do you guys think so far? All nope. good until the end, I saw. <laughs> yeah, nothing All right. so far. All right, so you don't think that you have a foul. Come on. I wouldn't pass on the first one. Right here? There's a foul there. I wouldn't there. pass That's on that. Foul. You got to call that. You got to call that. Yeah. I mean, what did the kid do? He's what is he doing right now? Getting his wine didn't like it. The he white, pushed, the white player. His... What is the white player yeah. doing? Screen. Setting, he's setting a good pick. Is that a good legal screen? Yep. Yep. Yes. And what does Green do? Pushes Push right him. through it. He just says, "Hey, get out of my way." Now, did he push him? You know, badly? No, but still, he moved him from a legal screen. The defender is obligated to go around a screen. He can't go through a screen. That's a foul. Yeah, well, Josh, look, he, he pushes from inside the circle about six feet, seven feet out to the top of the key. <laughs> right. That, so, I think that I think that's, that's an foul. easy foul. Yeah. And if you, pay, if you get that, everything else that happens after this play goes away. And that's, that should be easy for center to come across and get that. All right. Well, what... What could happen there is lead is looking at the ball handler and the defender and misses that. Yeah, which is why C, who's got eyes on it, could get that. Yeah, C's got to C has got to get the call. Trail can totally get it, but this is C's call. I agree, hundred percent. And That's to be easy. to be honest, I think lead because this is a. I mean, I know he didn't push him hard, but he like Tim said, he pushed him six feet. Right, yeah. he moved the player six feet. I think lead could sell the crap out of this call and come all the way in and own that too. All right. I'm not suggesting lead come in unless everyone else passes on it, but he could. All right. Let's just go. Let's move on. Let's go to the, the zoom in because then we come in here. Oh, I did a terrible job of this first bump. Do you think this is anything? No. Well, why no. did green, why did green fall down? He flopped. <laughs> <laughs> Did he have a legal guarding position, Green? Yes. I think he does. Yeah. Right? But then the bump, I know it's I know it's slow, but the bump is almost negligible, right? And he falls. 
But then what happens after? He grabs his shorts. He grabs his leg, I think. Yeah. <laughs> He's also oh. not in legal guarding position, which means he could get called for a block. Yeah, did he? Gonna... But but did the player fall over him on the ground? I don't think he really made Oh, yeah, look, he hit him right in the leg there. Yeah. You could call it. Now, this, Josh, could be an easy block. A block on that kid. He fell down. You think he flopped. And then now he's causing slight contact, which you could pass on. But now he's going slight contact on a shooter. Boom, block. I'm all day. Well, don't flop next time, and that won't happen. Now, I wouldn't say that, but I think that is a good situation to use that, that call. Agreed. All right. That's it. Block charge. You guys are so smart. You got most of them right. You've been coming regularly. See, you know, I talk about it all the time. Excellent. Those are fun calls. And, and a lot of the ones that call a charge, um, and it was actually a block because it's an airborne shooter. I think I make that mistake a lot too, because I'm so prone to get a block, but I think so many guys call block so much. It kind of evens out. I'm not saying I'm trying to get the call wrong, but those are hard plays to get. So what do you guys think? Good? Yes? Excellent. Real good. Loved it. A lot of great plays, Josh. Thanks. Um, great, great job, Josh. Way to keep us uh, on our toes, man, in, in May. In May. Yes. This is why I do it. I don't do it for you guys. I do it for me so I don't get bored. It's fun for me. Hopefully it's fun for you. And we're all learning together. So thanks for coming, guys. Yeah, thanks, Josh. Have a good June. No meeting next month, and we will see you back in July. Great. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Josh. Night. Have a great night. Have a wonderful Memorial Day weekend. Yep. Take Thank off. You. Take Good care. Josh. We'll talk soon. Fairbanks, Alaska. Yeah. Yeah. Very Thank nice. you, Josh. Hey, I appreciate that. Thanks for coming on, Greg. If I saw that earlier, I would have given you a shout out in front of everybody. Alaska. <laughs> it's all- it's all good. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I love it.